sound of a steam locomotive in the forest, once heard only by loggers methodically sawing down the mighty trees. Today, on the California coast near Santa Cruz, one can still witness the passage of a steam-powered train through the redwoods, but the loggers' saw is no longer heard. During the early parts of the century, the Southern Pacific offered a train known as the Suntan Special. Now, after many years, passengers can once again take a train to the famous Santa Cruz Boardwalk. The amazing thing about both of these trains, beside the fact that either one exists, is that they both run to the same place, somewhere that one can step back in time, somewhere like Roaring Camp. located in Felton, California, is a recreation of a western logging community. Here, people can leave behind hectic everyday life and spend a few hours at a slower pace. Early in the morning, people begin to gather, ready to leave behind their cares and travel back in time. The showcase for Roaring Camp, in fact, its initial reason for existence, has always been the narrow gauge train to the top of Bear Mountain, the Roaring Camp and Big Trees Narrow Gauge Railroad. Roaring Camp, there is always excitement in the air as the engineer pulls out the throttle of the steam locomotive and begins the steep, curving climb to the summit of Bear Mountain. the train leaves Roaring Camp, it enters the famous Big Tree Stand of Redwoods. This pristine grove of towering trees is what many people come to see. The beautiful setting quickly captures the attention of all the passengers. Well, the scenic experience is really quite something to behold. Uh, it, it, this area was uh, turned over, was actually purchased by a man around 1867, I believe, a man named Joseph Welch, who came up here with uh, an attorney for the, the uh, Isaac Graham family. Isaac Graham was a mountain man that owned all this property. They were, he died uh, four years previous to that, and they were going to subdivide this. Joseph Welch was along for the ride with his friend and was taken by the beauty of these trees. And uh, he himself said, I, I will buy these trees. Don't sell them to be logged off. And uh, interesting enough, back then it was uh, 60, in 1867, it was 350 acres of virgin redwoods for $6,000. $6,000 does indeed sound like a bargain price when one considers that this majestic forest would certainly have been destroyed by loggers had Joseph Welch not bought the land himself. This purchase was made long before anyone even dreamed of saving natural resources for future generations. Today, patrons of Roaring Camp can thank Mr. Welch for his foresight and enjoy the splendor of God's creation.
said on the Roaring Camp and Big Trees is more than just the Redwood experience. It is also a chance to ride behind a steam locomotive. The railroad employs several examples of a now rare type of engine, the narrow gauge geared logging locomotive. Engine number seven is a member of a family of locomotives that most people don't know anything about, a class of locomotives called the Shays. Shay locomotives were strong, dependable locomotives used to pull the logs out of the forest, take them to the mill, not necessarily to take the finished lumber to market, but to get the logs or uh, in other cases, uh, the minerals out of the mines or the uh, forests. Geared locomotives, the Shays, the Heislers, the Climax locomotives, which we have here at Roaring Camp, are slow locomotives. They don't move very fast. They're extremely powerful and they're extremely flexible, but they don't move very fast. They're built for rough track, out in the woods, sharp curves, steep, heavy grades. Um, they're basically built to replace an ox. An ox doesn't move very fast and neither does a ship. Even though Shays are authentic, historic steam locomotives, they don't always get the respect from the public that a museum piece deserves. The public in, in general, even the old timers, very seldom have they ever seen a Shay locomotive. Shay is very unusual for them. Um, there were about 2,700 of these locomotives built, yet most people have never seen them. Um, that's because they were up in the forest where no one would really go, or they'd have to really go hunting for the locomotives. When most people think of a steam locomotive, a machine such as Norfolk and Western's famous 611 comes to mind. Known as rod engines, these locomotives were designed to haul trains at mainline speeds on track with little curvature on small grades. The Shea locomotive, on the other hand, was at home in the logging environment. With its steep grades and sharp curves on track that was often temporary, Shays have been known to operate quite well on track that has been laid down the middle of a stream. The reason that a Shea is able to function so well in this harsh environment is because it was designed completely different from a rod locomotive. In a Shea, steam is fed from the boiler to three vertical cylinders, which transfer the power to a crankshaft much as in an automobile. The crankshaft then powers gears, which in turn spin the wheels. This makes for an extremely powerful locomotive because all wheels are powered even on curves. It takes two people in the cab of the steam locomotive to keep all of this machinery running. Since a steam locomotive is powered by boiling massive quantities of water, it is the job of the fireman to keep the boiler full of water and a hot fire going on at all times. Now, most people think that the fireman is always having to shovel coal into the firebox. The notion that all steam locomotives burn coal is, in fact, a misnomer. Many steam engines on the West Coast burned oil because coal was unavailable. Logging locomotives burned oil to prevent the machine from melting hot coal cinders into a dry forest. While the fireman is busy keeping up steam pressure, the engineer is charged with the running of the locomotive. Keeping the engine in motion on a steep grade with a heavy train demands great skill.
Charging up grade, the crew has their work cut out for them as the train encounters one of the most unique engineering feats in railroading, the switchback. Designed to give the railroad maximum elevation in as little space as possible, the switchback forces the train to stop and back up the hill. Once the top of the switchback is reached, the train once again reverses itself and continues forward up the grade to the top of Bear Mountain. about 70 miles away. That's the south end of the Coast Redwood Forest. Or you can go north of us all the way up to Curry County, Oregon, and that's the north.